This was once the greatest Grand Prix car in the world. Born out of the endless pursuit of perfection, this car was the last car ever produced by its manufacturer. It was a race car so unbeatable, its competition stopped showing up to the races because they knew they'd already lost. And it was a race car so ahead of its time, it was still winning races 10 years after its creation. This is the 1927 Delange 15 S8. The 15 S8 was, like most of its time, an evolution of earlier designs. Designed by the great Halbert Lory, the first 15 S8s were simply Delange's successful 1923 2LCV models, improved little by little from years of racing, paired with an all-new twin-supercharged inline-8 engine designed to comply with new 1.5-liter regulations. The inline-8 was a screamer. At a time when most racing engines topped out at only 5,000 RPM, the Delange's i8 with its nickel-chromium crankshaft topped out at over 8,000 producing upwards of 170 horsepower at its peak. But the 15S8 was not initially successful. Upon its unveiling for the 1926 San Sebastian Grand Prix, drivers were made instantly aware of a design flaw with its exhaust system. The exhaust pipes ran close to the cockpit floor and transferred heat directly to the driver's feet, causing them to burn after only a short driving distance. To avoid injury, multiple drivers traded the seat throughout the race and slowed their overall pace allowing the rival Bugatti to easily win the event. Later in the year, however, the 15S8 struggled to its first victory at the inaugural British Grand Prix. Held at the classic Brooklyn circuit, drivers Louis Wagner and Robert Senegal traded the seat, stopping every couple of laps to douse their feet in water to cool them. Mechanical issues with the Bugattis and Talbots allowed the stuttering pace of the Delange to be just enough to claim the victory. Louis Delange and Aubert Lorie were determined to do better for 1927. They overhauled the car, moving the exhaust to the left side away from the driver. They replaced the twin superchargers with a single, larger and more powerful unit. They lowered the chassis of the car and rotated the engine sideways to create a smaller front profile, the smallest of any Grand Prix car to date. And they lightened the vehicle, reducing its total weight by over 25%. Debuting at the 1927 French Grand Prix, the new and improved 15S8 was flawless. Piloted by the great Robert Benoit, it won the race handily over the Bugattis in a satisfying 1-2-3 finish for Delange. It was a car so reliable the reporter said it never had to have its hood raised. And it was so fast, competitors Bugatti and Talbot chose not even to enter the later 1927 Italian Grand Prix. At the three remaining Grand Prix races in the season, Robert Benoit won as well sweeping the European season and taking the World Manufacturers Championship for Delange. Louis Delange had built the world's best racing car and won it all. But while on top of the world, he bizarrely decided he was done with racing. He sold the four examples of the 15S8 to privateers, which continued racing them for the next 20 years. One example was entered by Louis Chiron in the 1929 Indianapolis 500. Qualifying 14th and finishing in 7th position, it was the only non-American car entered in the race. And even into the 1930s, a young Richard Dick Seaman got his hands on a Delange and made good use of it in the Voitourette races, winning on the Isle of Man, Donington Park, Copa Acerbo in Italy, and Bern, Switzerland. His success with the 15S8 allowed Seaman to display his driving skills, gaining attention from Mercedes-Benz boss Alfred Neubauer, and securing him a seat with the German Grand Prix team for 1937. The 15S8 was a Grand Prix car truly ahead of its time. A mechanical marvel with an impeccable record. And above all, pretty fantastic to look at. And so the 1927 Delange 15S8 was released for a set of Corsa a few weeks ago by a user named 42 over at Race Department. And this is one of 42's first ever mods. They explain they're very new to the modding scene and went on to produce something as beautiful as this. 
Every small detail for the car was produced from photographs and limited diagrams. There's very little information about cars from this time period, and so different photographs will have conflicting information. These cars very often changed from race to race, even with the same car itself, and different suspension and pieces were swapped out. And so it is an approximation of what the car would have been like in 1927, but it's absolutely beautiful and I think captures how great this car was very, very well. And with pre-war and interwar Grand Prix cars being quite rare, a car from 1927 is not something I've really ever seen before in a sim, so it's awesome to experience something almost completely brand new in a Seto Corsa. So to stretch the 15S8's legs, I wanted to try to do something as accurate as possible to show what driving and racing these cars was like in the 1920s. And so you've been looking at a modified and updated version of Fat Alfie's great Fontenay circuit. I've taken a look at this track before. It's somewhat of a what if. What if France had its own Nordschleife on public roads, uh, a huge road circuit in France that never actually existed, twisting through the hills. And so Fontenay is a beautiful track. It's originally based in the 1960s, but what user Pepperoni Hasey 24 over at Race Department has come out with is something called Dirty Old Town. And it's a patch or just a texture update skin for the track to give it a dirt road appearance and make it look straight out of the 1920s in most regards. There's still the odd object here and there that's out of place, especially the vehicles alongside the track. But overall, it absolutely transports you to a different time and is a joy to race in any of the pre-war cars. In addition to the wonderful skin, I've taken some of the advice of the comments and updated the surface file to make the track surface actually behave more like dirt. It's got bumps, it'll kick up rocks and sand and dust, importantly, uh, and really, really changes the experience. I'll put my values and some instructions in the description of the video, too, if you want to try it out. So lined up on the grid at Fontenay, a rough mix of cars. There's not too many cars available from this time period, but I've tried to piece together something somewhat representative of what would have raced back then. A little bit of run what you brung in the 1920s. So I'm gonna start from the back of the grid, do one giant lap around the Fontenay dirt circuit and see what racing the Delange 15S8 might've been like. All right, so here we are at the back of the grid of excellent cars. Try to get a clean start here. Lights are lit. Oh, we're underway. Oh, Mercedes in front of me stalls. One in front of him too. It's a very slow getaway. We'll see if I can come to the inside, past another stricken Mercedes. So they'll try to sort it out, get past a whole group of cars there. Now work down towards the first corner. So much dust. We've got a Bugatti in front, work underneath. A couple Bentleys, We've got another Mercedes here. Oh, and there's another Delange as well. You can see how sleek it looks. Get off the throttle as we head down to the first corner, back down to second gear. The Delange looks so much more sleek than the other cars. And these are definitely cars which all raced approximately the same time. So it's crazy to see how advanced it looks and low to the ground and everything uh, compared to all the other cars. But now work our way over the top of the hill here. Got past a good amount of the field there off the start. Just rock it away with the I-8 past one of our teammate cars. And through this twisty section, lots of twisty sections here. Whoa, that Bugatti in front, quite slow. I'll just work up the inside of him. Around a few curves here atop the hill. I found with this car, you can't quite slide it as much as you can the early 1920s cars. Those cars you can get very sideways and still save them. And I think that has something to do with the higher center of gravity on those cars that, compared to this. This car is so low to the ground and maybe a bit heavier than the early cars. Uh, when you get it very sideways, there's just no saving it. You're gonna be sliding a very long time. Come down to first gear here though. So we've got a Bugatti holding us up. That might actually be the leader towards the front already. Long way to go in the lap though. It's only a one lap race, but it's a good lap, especially with the dirt, with the less grip. We've got less grip on the track than with asphalt. So we're sliding around a bit. But the surface in this is really well done as we'll come down the hill here. Gonna make sure we don't go too fast. It's a lot of these downhill corners, which you have to slow down even more for or else you'll just slide out wide. Get back on the throttle early, try to rock it away. We got two Mercedes side by side in front, blocking the whole road up some stones and rocks. You can imagine how much stuff you'd get right in the face racing back in these days. Oh, swing way out wide. Almost clipping a sign there. 
one of the Mercedes breaking away behind another one. So we'll pop to a long left-hander here. Don't exactly want to go too wide. It's easier to pass maybe into a braking zone, although there's almost no brakes on this car. Very much a product of its time. Go through this first right-hander deceptively. Quick corner for that one. Second one up at the top of the hill here, though. Got to shift all the way down. First gear for it. And I pretty much go to the floor with the brakes when we're braking in corners because there's no no locking up the tires with these brakes on dirt. Come on to the first cobblestone section. The dust goes away instantly. It's so much nicer to drive. Won't be able to slice through a few of these cars. There we go. Past both of the Mercedes there. We just got the Bugatti in front now. Rock it up this hill here. But I was mentioning, lowered the grip on the circuit, added the bumps and things, and it just really made it come alive. The skin itself, the dirt texture skin pack that uh, you can get, excellently done. It's not quite just a dirt road. It's kind of this weird packed down dirt that you see in old photos from the time, just because it's a very well-traveled road, but it is still dirt. It's the Spigatti in front leaving the door open for me there, but he's gonna accelerate up the hill a little easier. I'm in second gear, revving quite low. I actually gotta open this thing up. Coming onto a faster section. And we'll let it sing now. I've been revving the, whole, the car quite low for the entire lap. You'll see as we get up the rev range, get towards, we're only at about 6,000 now. Come through a little chicane here. I gotta hold off for just a second. is almost out of sight at the bottom of the screen, but you'll see the needle when it comes up in the yellow section there. Oh, this car gets very slidey. Come down to a 90 degree left-hander. The yellow section on the tachometer is, oh, we're gonna be able to make the move down to first gear. There we go. Cobblestone's working out well for the old Delange. The yellow section is right at about 8,000, so when the needle gets up in there, just the, the sound of the car coming at you is quite unbelievable and uh, feels like it pulls the whole way. Even at a low RPM, you still get that awesome acceleration, which is why you can drive it down there, but as the engine spools up, you still get a lot of pull out of it. Coming up to about 7,000 RPM now flat out here. We'll get up to third gear. Still going flat over the crest. Leading the way. Nobody in the mirrors. We'll come up some city streets here. Got a break now. Slam on the brakes. Down to second. Down to first. Luckily get some cobblestones. A little more grip than the dirt to get us around this right-hander. Now back on the throttle. We'll head down a hill through a twisty section, kind of a natural chicane coming up here. Very easy to jump the berms. Notice it because of the church in the background, but here we go. Slide it on through. Nice and easy. Uh, right out wide, almost to the signs. Back on the throttle. I was finishing up just about the first third of the circuit. To another faster section here. Just get the throttle down. Third gear right now. It's a four speed. So you do have a little extra there. This is an easy section to go wide with that little hut. Brave man standing, standing to the right there. All right, we'll come over the hill. This is an awesome corner. Put a counter steer in it. Nice long sweeper. Get out of the throttle for a minute, but then just slide on through to a chicane here and you just take it easy. Keep it in third gear though. I found you can really use the whole rev range, like I'm saying, with the with the power that you have. So it's a very enjoyable car to drive. I could see how you don't have to push it the whole way. It's rocketing down here, third gear, just flat out the top of the hill. This next corner looks like it's going to be extremely tight, but it's actually not that tight. Just take a lift of the throttle, come on through, then we get facing towards the tight corner, but right up to the outside of the circuit. There we go. You really need to break for this one. You got some curbing on the left side on the exit. Up to second gear, coming to a tighter section now. 
This car definitely finds its home on the fast straightaways. This track itself, a lot more curvy than most of the tracks, especially with elevation than most of the tracks were in the 1920s and 30s. Outside of the Nordschleife, uh, obviously, but the French Grand Prix for a long time was held on very straight, long roads. 1927 was held at the Oval Circuit in France, which is an awesome track as well to race. Second gear here, we'll just leave it. We're gonna start braking for this uphill right-hander. And a first, just guide it through. second there. Long sweeping right-hander now. This is going to lead us to the first of three carousel-like corners. You can see the signs, the little exclamation point. The signs are really helpful on this track to know where you are. We'll get it down to first gear and you have to slow down so much more than you'd think for this corner. I'll just roll it in. It's very easy to go wide. There we go. Keep it right in the bottom of the bowl. Cool feeling to glide through a corner like that in a car like this. Back on it though, heading down the hill. It's gonna be a tightening radius corner, I believe. I've done a lot of laps around this track in the asphalt version and it drives very different with the surface changes for dirt. You have to absolutely back up corners in a car like this, you really wanna apex and get on the throttle while you're hitting the apex to help turn the car. So you have to back up your braking quite a lot. Your long left-hander, you should have left it out to the right. Oh, a lot of counter steer there. You really don't want to get over 180 degrees of counter steer. You'll have a hard time saving things after that or you'll get into an oscillation back and forth. Come under the Michelin Bridge here, there's a kink coming up down to first gear, trying not to run wide. Oh, the car backed itself into the corner. Making myself look like a pro, but that just kind of happened. Right, we'll come up to a couple asses, a couple right-handers. Easy to fake yourself on these. This first one could have gone faster there. Second one as well, but then you need to get on the brakes. Down to first gear, this corner is a lot tighter than you'd think. the right and left handers got a lot of dirt berms on this side which can end races in hilarity as you go flying through the air but a lot of fun and we'll come up to end just about the second sector of the circuit it's a 25 kilometer circuit once in a while you'll see one of the kilometer markers on the side so you can kind of keep track mentally of where you are top of the hill. This next left-hander is so easy to run wide on. You have houses on either side. Really want to get on the brakes then down to first gear. Guide it on in. Not a place you'd want your home to be. Oh, car getting all kinds of sideways. Working up the hill. Just work that wheel. Best to have a big steering wheel room for a car like these. Right, trying to get back on the throttle without kicking the rear end out. Even though this car has a lot of horsepower, it comes on in a very smooth, predictable, very smooth and predictable the way it comes on. So it's not that hard to modulate the throttle. It's actually a pretty good car to learn how to do that, but it is a heavy car. Even though it was lightened quite a bit, you can tell it's heavy. Come to this long right-hander downhill. Another easy one to run wide. <laughs> All of the places that I say, you run wide, it's, it's because I've done it. All right, up to second gear now. Getting further into it. No sign of cars behind, I think we've evaded everybody today, but we're in the best car in the world for 1927. The top of this hill, blind crests. Not sure exactly where the road's gonna go. It's the end of the circuit. It's the hardest part to memorize. Come up to a chicane here. You can tell by the signs. Second gear here, just 
easing the car through back on the throttle where you know you're pointed in the right direction. This is downhill section, working now towards the second S in the second carousel corner. You'd be careful about this section. Easy to get a lot of momentum and run the car wide. Got the another exclamation point side down to first gear. Coming to this left hander and quickly we're gonna get into the bowl corner to the right. Once again, you need to really slow the car down. It'll look like it's very slow, but you really cannot take a lot of speed through the right-handers. Through the carousel corners. All right. Right towards the end of the lap now, we'll come up to the third carousel very quickly. 24 kilometers, just a kilometer to go. Kilometer and change. Such a beautiful track though with all the trees and the long distance views, the object placements, unbelievable. All right, final carousel. Down to first, you got walls right on the outside of this one too, so take extra care. Ooh, under steering there. You can see I was going so slow, but still almost too fast. But now I'll rock it away, just a few more corners to go. Coming to the left-hander here. There we go. No sign of a car behind, so we're good. We're clear to the finish. Final chicane. Try not to mess everything up here. So close to the end. There we go, left and right. Get on the throttle and throttle up for the fans. Come to the line. Second gear, flat out. Using all eight cylinders of the I-8 the line to win at Fontenay. beautiful car around a beautiful circuit. There isn't many things better than that. 42 has done such an excellent job on this car and for one of their first mods, if not their first mod, uh, I, I just am excited to see what comes out of this. I know there's actually a few more early Grand Prix cars coming from a few different modders and so it's awesome to see this era get some attention. I was happy to see a skin for Fontenay uh, that made it feel like an older track. We could use a few more older circuits as well, maybe ones that actually ran these cars on them, but Fontenay itself, such a beautiful track and a joy to lap. I think it uh, fits quite well with anything pre-70s, and even then you can have fun with any type of car on it. So recommend checking out the car, uh, recommend checking out the track. I'll put the links to everything in the description of the video. I hope you enjoyed this. I very much enjoyed the last few days testing this car out and can't wait to see what else comes to race it again. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all again next time.